Space weather and the latest. Solar wind has arrived and also debris from giant comet Swift Tuttle. This is on space weather. You have a fantastic video showing how it's uh, very strange that this thing is directed to, uh, totally towards us with millions of uh, what looks like asteroids coming at us. The comet Swift Tuttle has a huge nucleus about 26 kilometers in diameter. Most other comets are much smaller, with nuclei only a few kilometers across. This one has 26 kilometers diameter. As a result, Comet Swift Tuttle produces a large number of meteorites, and many, many of which are hefty enough to produce fireballs, as we're having uh, lately. Now, the space weather conditions solar wind has arrived, as predicted, a stream of solar wind has reached Earth July today, July 31st, through tomorrow, August 1st and 2nd. It's gently buffeting our planet's magnetic field. The gas material, gaseous material is flowing from a hole in the sun's atmosphere. High altitude, latitude sky watchers should be alert for auroras, especially in the southern hemisphere, where the winter darkness favors visibility of these auroras. The uh, solar wind is going at 452.5 kilometers per second, density at 5.3 protons per cubic centimeter. X-ray solar flares, six hour maximum from A7, 1951 UT, July 30th, 24 hour from A7, 1951 UT, July 30th. Sunspot, spotless days, current stretch is seven days. So, we have the comet Swift Tuttle with a huge nucleus bringing with it a large number of meteoroids. The six year study by NASA's Meteoroid Environment Office found that the Perseids shower produced more fireballs, the Perseids. Fireballs more than any other annual shower. It takes place usually now in the summer and all the month of August. During the Perseids meteor shower, which lasts for weeks, Comet debris particles a few centimeters wide hit the atmosphere with an average speed of 59.6 kilometers per second. By the way, that's 133,350 miles per hour. The average magnitude of the resulting fireball is minus 3.7, about as bright as Venus. More fireballs are in the offing as Earth moves deeper into the comet's debris stream. So generally speaking, the best time to look is during the dark hours, and hopefully in an area where you don't have too many city lights, you'll be able to see them better. Dark hours before sunrise when the shower's radiant is high in the sky. Now holes in the sun, we have three number of holes, three holes, one bigger on the left and two smaller ones, one on the right, two smaller ones on the left, the Earth is about to be strobed by three streams of solar wind, each flowing from a hole in the sun's atmosphere. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory photographed the gaseous spigots on July 29. And you can see them here very clearly. NASA image. Coronal holes, places where the sun's magnetic field peels back and allows solar wind to escape. The coronal holes look dark in extreme ultraviolet images of the sun because glowing hot plasma normally contained there is missing. The first of the streams is expected to arrive August 1st and followed by two more in rapid succession on August 4th. Now I'll remind you in the video before this one on the solar on space weather where we talked about the Carrington event. That's exactly what happened in 1859, September 1st and 2nd. First, they had one solar flare that uh, hit the Earth, and that caused the upcoming solar flares the day later to have a clear path and a much faster path to hit the Earth. It usually takes two or three days for the flare to get to Earth, 72 hours perhaps. Well, the one in, uh, that came, the second one that came during the Carrington event in 1859 only took 17.6 hours. 
So let's see if that happens in this case again, because we're having the first one on August 1st and two more rapid succession on August 4th. The Carrington event only had two flares, one coming one day and the other one coming the next day. This one, this time we're having three flares. Now polar geomagnetic unrest and possibly some minor magnetic storms are possible on these days. High latitude sky watchers should be alert for the auroras, especially in the southern hemisphere where winter darkness favors visibility, as we said. The galaxy globe, you know, every week they sell something that goes out into the higher uh, atmosphere. If you want to purchase it, uh, feel free. It's about $150. They've got their contact here. The All Sky Fireball Network, we've had July 29, a network reporting 29 fireballs. The Inner Solar System shows that all of the fireball orbits intersect at a single point. How strange. All of the Inner Solar System fireballs intersect, how strange, at Earth. How is that possible? Anyway, that's, you know, I'm not a scientist, I'm not an or uh, uh, astronomer, I have no idea why they only intersect at Earth, but anyway. We've had 1,983 potential hazardous asteroids coming at us today, July 31st. The day is just starting. And um, July 28th, 29. Uh, let's see. Uh, then we have August 1st, August 10th, 12th, 17th. And the other dangerous one is August 28th. It's only going to be 2.7 lunar distances from us. And it's a diameter of 92 meters, so that's not small. Then we have the cosmic rays in the atmosphere. They've developed a new predictive model of aviation radiation called ERAD, short for Empirical Radia Radiation Model. Constantly flying radiation sensors on board airplanes over the US and around the world to collect more than 22,000 GPS tagged radiation measurements. And they can predict the dosage on any flight over the U.S. with a minor error, no less than 15%. Uh, there are hot flight tables here if you want to see. Basically, the more hours you are and the higher you are up, it, in, it, it, uh, it goes uh, logarithmically much higher. Uh, and you're susceptible to, of course, radiation. And it's not good for the health, as we know. The... Um, Space weather balloons once a week go up and do this. They also measure the stratospheric radiation. For example, from March 15, 2015 to July 2018, it has increased 18%. At stratospheric radiation increased 18%, which means that it's happening because of the Earth's magnetosphere lessening. And if we extrapolate that from July of 2018 to July 2019, if in five years it was 18%, late 20%, 4% a year, that means that up to now it should be about 22% less of uh, magne uh, Earth magneto magneto uh, uh, magnetosphere. The um, protection that we have against solar radiation and cosmic radiation. Now, why are cosmic rays intensifying? The main reason is the sun. Solar storm clouds such as the coronal mass ejection CME sweep aside the cosmic rays when the Earth they pass the Earth. During solar maximum, CMEs are abundant and cosmic rays are held at bay. But now that we're entering the new solar cycle, a lower solar activity, means that it's at a minimum. That means that the sweeping solar flares are less and the solar cycle is swinging towards solar minimum allowing, uh, minimum, allowing cosmic rays to return. Another reason could be the weakening of Earth's magnetic field, which helps protect us from deep space radiation. So the weakening of the Earth's magnetic field allows more solar flare energy to come in, also cosmic rays, which of course are not good for health, not for people, not for plants. I'll leave links below for you for this.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.